Hey everyone, welcome back to Custer and Wolf Building a Watch Company. I'm RT Custer, and today we are talking about the history of upcycling. What is upcycling as far as trademarks, refurbishing, and recycling are considered? The reason we're talking about this is because every Friday we're creating the chapters of the story of Hamilton v. Vortic, which is our David and Goliath story, or the time that we got sued by the Swatch Group over a trademark and really over upcycling. We call that Upcycling the American Dream, and you can find that over on Vortic's YouTube channel or at vorticwatches.com slash victory. If you want to learn more, pre-order the book, uh, check out the watches we're making in uh, for those that aren't aware, Vortec Watch Company and the American Artisan Series are our primary product. We salvage and restore antique American pocket watches, and we turn them into one-of-a-kind wrist watches. So that is upcycling. That's what we do, taking something that uh, doesn't have a whole lot of value and turning it into something that has a lot of value. We get a lot of questions, though, and we've gotten a lot of questions about trademarks. Just for the last you know, eight years, it's been in some ways, unfortunately, my life trying to learn about trademarks and what they mean. Trademark infringement is what one of the things we were accused of at Vortec Watch Company from this watch group on that Hamilton v. Vortec trial. And so I had to go down the rabbit hole of, of learning about trademarks, why they're important for small businesses, for entrepreneurs why they matter in terms of recycling or upcycling is, is what we do. So what we're talking about today is trademark infringement. And if you're an attorney and you hear me say something that's not correct, toss a comment here on YouTube because I am not an attorney. I am just an entrepreneur. I really like to be a generalist and try to learn everything about entrepreneurship and be a good CEO of this company. But unfortunately, like I said, I've had to learn a lot about trademarks, but I'm certainly not an expert. I'm just documenting this information that hopefully will help others. But we're talking about trademark infringement. And the best way I've described that to my friends throughout this, this lawsuit, you know, this six-year battle that we had was consumer confusion or lack thereof. Are the customers fully aware of what they're buying? So when you get accused of trademark infringement, they're basically saying, um, that you're using someone else's brand to make money and that's not okay because that that brand has a trademark and, and has value And that's really you know, that's why it was called Hamilton v. Vortec We take antique American Hamilton pocket watches and turn them into wrist watches It still says Hamilton on the face of the watch that trademark that brand is not owned by Vortec. It's owned by Hamilton So this was an interesting case and one of the things that, that we said and, and throughout documenting the story was you never want to be the defendant on an interesting case because it means the law doesn't exist yet. There's, there's things that are similar, but nothing like this a trademark case had happened in luxury, in jewelry specifically, and much less watches. There were a couple of similar cases, though, that I want to talk about today that are, that are really interesting and are just like the history of where this all comes from, upcycling, refurbishing, recycling. Just to make sure everyone's on the same page about what consumer confusion is, let's use a really easy example. If I am an expert drywaller, I can put up drywall like no one else. I've been doing it for 20 years, let's say. And, and that's not me. I, you don't want me to work with my hands. That's not what I do. But let's say I was. I was an expert drywaller. It's 1055. I had all the connections in the drywall industry and I wanted to build a store, a department store, like a Home Depot, that had everything you needed for drywalling and building walls. And I wanted to call it Walmart. W-A-L-L-M-A-R-T. Can I do that? Absolutely not. <laughs> because Walmart, the Walton family, A, you don't mess with the Waltons, and B, that they have a trademark on Walmart, wall dash mart and everything similar. If you tried to create a, a store called Walmart, even with two L's in it, they would sue you immediately and you wouldn't get off the ground. And they would have every right to do so because they own the trademark on that word. 
And somebody might look at your store called Walmart, W-A-L-L, and think that it was a Walmart by the Walton family, as we know, a true Walmart. That is confusing to the consumer when they see those two brands next to each other. And so from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, which is who dictates a lot of this stuff, and the federal justice system, the legal system, that would be wrong. So one really good example, we get into refurbishing and upcycling. And the example that we cited a lot in our Hamilton v. Vortic case was Champion Spark Plugs. And it's actually Champion versus Sanders. And this was a case in 1947, went to the Supreme Court. Very big case cited in a lot of similar cases now. And we talked about this in our case a lot. Spark plugs, obviously a very important part of a combustion engine, can be recycled. They can be refurbished. And back in the 1940s, um, this smaller company, Sanders Co., I think it is, it might be Saunders, I'm not, I apologize, I'm not sure. They were taking authentic champion spark plugs out of cars, refurbished them, made them work like new again, put them in a box that said a refurbished champion spark plug and sold them for less money than a, a retail price champion spark plug. Now, a lot of us look at that and they're like, okay, well, that's upcycling, that's refurbishing. They're doing something nice for the world. You know, we're saving the world. We're not making a new thing. We're not just throwing that thing away. Obviously in the forties, that was kind of a new concept. It was interesting and it went all the way to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the smaller company because Champion, you know, if you look at it from a business standpoint, the big company, Champion Spark Plugs, they were, they had competition now. Somebody was selling a true and authentic Champion Spark Plug that had been refurbished and they weren't getting any more money out of that. They, they had already made the money when they sold it. So it went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court ruled on the side of the small company saying that Champion had already made the money when they sold it the first time. And when they sold it the first time, they released the rights out into the world. It's called free use or free market, right? Um, some people call it first use. Um, there's something called the first use doctrine when it comes to legal. But once it's been used and then it's been recycled, that is okay from a patent standpoint. And if you want me, if it would be helpful for me to do a video of what's the difference between a trademark, a patent, and, and copyrights, I'm, again, I'm not an attorney, but I'm happy to, to do that. So put a comment underneath this or send us an email, let us know. We can totally make that video if that's helpful for you. But from a patent standpoint, the patents are released into the world when you put it out there. From a trademark standpoint, though, we're talking about consumer confusion you know, or lack thereof. And so the Supreme Court said it's totally okay to take a Champion spark plug, refurbish it, and resell it using Champion's logo on the spark plug and on the packaging, as long as there is a disclaimer that was very easy to read at the point of sale where the customer makes the purchase, so the customer is not confused and they know that the word refurbished is said right there and this is not being sold by Champion. It no longer has a warranty by Champion. It is refurbished and that's why it's a lower price. As long as the consumer is not confused, that's okay. And that set precedent and precedent is very important when it comes to these lawsuits. There was another one in 2004, um, Craftsman Limousines versus Ford and a couple other companies. This limo company was taking Ford cars, cutting them in half, extending them, making limos, and they were advertising that this was a limousine made using a Ford car. And Ford did not want them to use the Ford logo or in advertising at trade shows. This was 2004. And there was a lawsuit that happened where Ford didn't want that to happen, um, and Ford thought it was not okay to use their logo, even though it was a Ford car being extended and, and turned into a limo. And this was a very similar case, and they cited Champion Spark Plugs a fair amount in that case, where as long as the consumer knows that it's not Ford selling the limousine, as long as it's very clear to the person purchasing the car or the limo that this was originally made by Ford, but no longer has a Ford warranty and is now a 
Craftsman limousine, that is okay. Craftsman won that case, won millions of dollars in damages and all these kind of things because it was not okay that Ford didn't want that to happen and Ford was coming after them and making their lives miserable. Ford had already made the money and sold the car and started that process. So it, that's another like first use kind of conversation there. The biggest one that we talked about though was a case from 2017 that's called Lexmark v. Impressions. And this is very similar to Champion Spark Plugs, but it also went all the way to Supreme Court because it was kind of a new thing, it was a slightly different industry. And Lexmark is a printer company, right? They make printers, they make ink. Impressions was a small company and they found original Lexmark printer ink cartridges and refilled them refurbished them and sold them as refurbished authentic Lexmark printer ink cartridges for a much lower price than um, Lexmark was selling their their new ink and if you've ever bought printer ink you understand how expensive that is and how big of a deal that would be that like I could go buy a refurbished one with the same ink but just a, a, a reused cartridge and save money not only are we saving money, we're saving the planet. Again, it's a piece of plastic. In this case, we're recycling, we're re reusing. That case we cited a lot because, or in Hamilton v. Vortic, it, it wasn't as clean and simple as just like a spark plug turned into a refurbished spark plug. It wasn't the same exact thing. The product was being altered. So Lexmark printer ink cartridges ran out of ink, and then this new company put their ink inside of the cartridge and still had the Lexmark brand on it and was using the Lexmark brand in advertising. That way also went all the way to Supreme Court. The small company, Impressions, won that as well. I couldn't find the damages and all the things that, that came from it. You're innocent until proven guilty, but you have to spend a lot of money to prove that you're innocent. And in this case with Impressions, they would probably cost them a fortune to prove that they were innocent and prove that this was okay. But they ended up doing that taking a printer ink cartridge and refurbishing it is okay. Very similar case, the last one I have is, is Titleist golf balls. There's a lot of uh, conflict right now, actually, Titleist versus Costco, and um, lots of cool and interesting you know, lawsuits related to that. But people have been refurbishing golf balls for decades. Is it okay to take a Titleist golf ball, refurbish it, and then sell it and still have the brand Titleist on it? And yes, according to Champion Spark Plugs, in that case in 1947, that is okay because it's the same, turned into the same. It's refurbished, you just have to call it refurbished. Basically the word refurbished has to be bigger than the word Titleist. Why Hamilton v. Vortec was interesting though is because everything on the inside of our watch is an antique, it's all original. We're upcycling that, we're refurbishing that, but then we're adding our components on the outside to make it a wristwatch. So we've now significantly altered, in the eyes of many, the original product. Technically, the original product is the same. We've significantly altered the use case of the product. So we referenced that first use. We gave these second use. This is now a wristwatch. It was a pocket watch. So that's why our um, lawsuit was interesting and different. Hopefully. This conversation is helpful, understanding the history, again, going all the way back to Champion Spark Plugs, 1947, that we've been arguing about refurbishing, recycling. And in our case, this was one of the first ones where we were upcycling. We were taking something with not a whole lot of value and turning it into a greater value. All those things that uh, we talked about, besides the Ford limousine, actually, were they were taking something that had a higher value refurbishing it and selling it for a lower cost to save the planet and save the consumer money. The, the closest one that was fairly similar that we tried to talk about, but it was a little more difficult because it was a stretch, no pun intended, was the, the Ford and, and limousine conversation. And that was, you know, Ford made this car for, I don't know, let's say $40,000, and then they made a stretch limo out of it for probably $100,000. They were upcycling cars that need a new home, turn them into something a lot more valuable, and the world needed to know that was okay. So that's the story of upcycling, refurbishing, recycling, 
again, if it would be interesting or valuable for us to make more videos about trademarks versus patents and copyrights, I'd love to do that. Um, if it would be interesting to talk about how to go get a trademark, we have many now because we've learned how valuable these things are. Um, I'm happy to do a, a video on that. So put your thoughts in the comments if you want us to, to do a little more education around trademarks in general. And yes, you should always uh, consult an attorney, but some attorneys are $100 an hour and some are $1,000 an hour. So happy to make some content around what it should cost to get a trademark if that's a value as well. And that's this episode of Custer and Wolf building a watch company. Thank you for joining us as we kick off season three here. Definitely check out our other episodes uh, where Tyler and I talk about the, the current day happenings uh, here at Vortec Watch Company as we build multiple watch companies here in Fort Collins, Colorado. And then, like I said, the, the point of this video with trademarks and upcycling all this stuff is to answer some questions around why are we writing a book and creating a documentary called Upcycling the American Dream? And it's all about that Hamilton v. Vortec lawsuit, which you can learn more at vorticwatches.com slash victory. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next episode. So what are you drawing? Ship. Ship, okay. Yep, thought you were going in a different way with that. I like it.